much to be known about little old me. Whether I be on the ground or in a tree, I span the world for all to see. A subject of study for mycologists to be. Welcome to the pilot episode of the Gnome Grown Podcast. I'm Tanner Prittis, and I am a fun guy. You may also know me as Gnome Grown Mushrooms. I am a cultivator, the master cultivator of mushrooms. Um, I started growing mushrooms about three years ago. Um, I loved it so much that I started a business out of it. Uh, now I sell all kinds of cultivation items, especially cultures. Uh, but what I wanted to make this podcast for is so I could give back to the community. Uh, this community is probably one of the best ones I've ever been a part of. Cultivating could be a little overwhelming, and I wanted to provide something that helped new growers along the way, um, along their path, their journey to learning how to cultivate mushrooms. There's so much that goes into it, and so I wanted to offer a place that all of it could be in one space. You can learn all the things that you need to know about cultivating to grow your own mushrooms. Um, and so that's what we're going to do with this podcast. We are going to teach you how to cultivate from scratch, from the beginning, with the basics. What this episode is going to be about is, like I said, it's going to be the basics. We're going to be talking about spores, agar, liquid culture, spawn, substrate, and contamination. You might not know what any of these words are, but I'm going to let you know. And there's going to be examples along the way. So you can see, you can not only hear, but you can see what I'm talking about. So first, we will be talking about spores. Spores are the beginning of your cultivation. All mushrooms produce some type of spores. Uh, spores are the reproduc reproductive genetic material that fungus excrete. They are spread in many different fashions, some from gills, spines, or spores. Some, like the earth star fungus, use environmental factors like rainfall to propel spores into the air. Each mushroom can produce millions and millions of spores. So these, this is the building block for all cultivation. You need to know how to collect spores. You need to know how to germinate them um, and to collect them properly. And we're going to go over all of those. But today, I wanted to show you what they look like. This, uh, these, this, and these are spores from the chestnut mushroom, also known as foliota adiposa. So each spore print is unique to that species. So they'll have a specific color. They'll drop in a specific way. So these ones, if you can see, these are nice and brown. Uh, you'll get different colors like black, purple, white, yellow, tan. Um, and they are collected like this. You'll generally see a spore print in this fashion. Spores are the foundation of mushroom cultivation. A single print can last you years and only a small portion of a print is needed to produce mycelium. So you only need a little bit. So one of these could last you like up to five years, even longer. There's been crazy cases of people having spore prints for years and years, 10 years, and then they, you know, they bring them back to life, which is pretty amazing. So these, this is, in every cultivator's library needs to be some spores. This is the easiest way to store your mushroom species. So how do we grow with spores? Spores can be used directly to inoculate whatever media you grow in, but the best way to grow with spores is on agar. So agar, uh, also known as agar agar, is a gelatin culture media made from seaweed. Um, Mycologists and cultivators use it to germinate spores, expand cultures, and isolate genetics. It is usually in put in petri dishes like this. Um, but basically, this is just um, a growing medium that allows you to germinate your spores and to expand and to really get a good look at what kind of mycelium you're working with. Um, so I have a couple of examples here. So notice how each one is different. They all are very specific to each strain. Each strain will have a different mycelial mat, which is what these are. This is mycelium. The little white stuff is mycelium. And um, so these are lion's mane, 
Parisium emaceus, red reishi, Gadoderma lingzi, and shiitake lentinula, le, sorry, lentinula idotis. I might have said that last word wrong, but that's okay. Um, so, uh, what do you call what do you call a guy with negative opinions? A shit talkie. <laughs> that's great. So, like I said, the white stuff is called mycelium. This is actually the living body of the fungus. So, like the mushroom itself isn't actually the living part. That's just the reproductive organ. Um, this is what is actually alive. This is this is the body of the mushroom. This is the really important stuff. This is the stuff that's in the ground and in the tree. Sometimes, like with Cordyceps militaris, it can even reside within insects. The next step in cultivation after you have got your spores, you've got them onto a gar, they've grown out into these beautiful, beautiful looking cultures, um, then you'll want to make a liquid culture. Um, so while a gar is a two-dimensional growth medium, liquid culture allows mycelium to grow in three dimensions. Liquid culture is used to expand an existing culture as well as creating a way to inoculate grain spawn more effectively. Um, inoculate is basically putting in the stuff inside of what you're growing. So like, say I wanted to inoculate a mozzarella stick, I would inoculate it with cheese. You're filling it with whatever that junk is. So, um, liquid culture is generally used when cultivating, um, gourmet and medicinal mushrooms because it's just easier to expand that way. It's easier to inoculate. Um, you can really get a lot at like this one. This one agar dish can make like 20 liters of liquid culture. So it's a really great way to expand. Um, so we'll give you some examples here of what liquid culture looks looks like. So this one, ooh, can you see all the little floaties in there? So that one is a white, bush, white button mushroom, Agaricus bisporus. That's the kind that you get at the store. Most everybody has seen this kind of mushroom. It's that little, what do they call those? Um, portobello. Boom. It's like a portobello mushroom. This one is an enoki mushroom. Um, you can see, you can see the mycelium all throughout. So this is what I mean by a three-dimensional space. Instead of just going on two, it can grow out into this entire space. Um, and so you'll generally find these cultures in syringes like these ones. This is a hen of the woods, also known as matake or grifola frondosa. You'll get your cultures inside these little syringes, um, and this is what you'll use to inoculate your grain with. Here you go, buddy. Again, notice the difference in the myceliums. These ones look very similar, but you can tell this one has a little bit different coloration, um, and this one's a little more white. Also, my mycelium will have unique smells. Um, they'll have a specific smell to them. They'll have a specific look. So it's actually, it's pretty interesting. The more that you work with mushrooms, the more that you start to notice when you can notice when your grow is off just by the smell. The next step of the growing process, so we've we've done our spores to agar, agar to liquid culture, and now we're going to inoculate our spawn. So what is spawn? Spawn, or grain spawn, is hydrated grain that has been sterilized. This is then inoculated with a culture or spores to expand the culture. It could then be broken down to spread into more jars or substrate. Um, now, every cultivator uses a different grain. There are a lot of choices, so try them all out. You can use rye, corn, brown rice, millet, wheat, berries, and wild bird seed, that one being my favorite. So, this is a just inoculated the other day. Looks like yesterday. I inoculated these the other day. This is what grain spawn looks like. This is before... You can see any growth, um, but you can see in there, these are all free flowing. And then later on, it'll look like this. So this is what you're looking for. You want these nice, beautiful, white 
strands and clumpiness. This is a shiitake mushroom. This, these are going to be blue oyster mushrooms, Pleurotus ostritus. I definitely said that one wrong. This is what grain spawn is. This is this is what you're looking for. This is th one of the final steps before you get into the actual fruiting step of growing mushrooms. So the next step is to take, so you've gone from your spores to your agar, to your liquid culture, to your grain, and then from there you go to your substrate. Substrate is the final growing medium used in the growing process. This is the last expansion of a culture before fruiting or growing your mushrooms. Many different struts, many different substrates can be used when growing. You can use sawdust, cocoa core, which is coconut husk, straw, wood chips, cardboard, plant husks, basically anything fibrous and uh, that's made out of plants. Um, so each species of mushrooms has a different specifications for what kind of substrate you use. Um, but generally speaking, whatever you can get your hands on will do just fine. Um, so this is my favorite substrate that I use. This is alder sawdust mixed with cardboard. Um, you can see it in there. It's nice and free flowing. This one I made pretty quickly, so it's not completely hydrated. But that's what your substrate looks like. Now, let's talk about every grower's nightmare. Contamination. Contamination comes in many forms and from many places. There are a lot of steps to cultivation and each one poses a threat to contaminating your grow. Well, this can take many different forms, colors. It, it's, it, you'll know when it's, when it's there, you'll see it. It looks pretty drastic. So this is a contaminated jar. Look at it next to this one. You can see the nice healthy mycelium along with this disgusting, black these are all spores from a different this is a mold this is a cobweb mold and it's all sporulated and if i were to shake this jar up it would all turn black and disgusting so every cultivator is going to run into can contamination so there's a lot of steps um to preventing it the golden rule of cultivating for me is sterility be sterile that being said you will run into it so don't be discouraged if it ain't white, it ain't right. Whoa, whoa, slow down, you insurrectionist. Any kind of color or odd smell is a bad sign when you're growing. Um, it can be green, black, yellow, blue. Um, in most cases, any other color than white is a bad sign. Um, that being said, some species have color-tinted mycelium, so before you chuck it, make sure that you know what you're working with. So yeah. That's it for the examples. Um, so in further episodes, we'll be going into each section in depth. We'll explain to you how to do all of these little pieces. There's so much that goes into it, but once you understand it, it's going to be a breeze and I'll, we're going to walk you through every little piece. There is a vast potential in mycology and cultivation. Mushrooms aren't just used for food. They've been used in medicine, supplements. You can create eco-friendly packaging, filter water, repair damaged soil, compost organic material, help in re rehabilitation and therapy. The list goes on and on. And people like you and me can be a part of that. Okay, if you made it all the way through this podcast, you are in luck. We are doing a giveaway. And what we're giving away is these awesome stickers. They are designed by our wonderful graphics designer, Ash, and they are based off of gnomes from my very own collection. Uh, what you'll need to do is give me the answer to the riddle that's at the beginning and the end of this podcast. What you'll need to do is go to gnomegrown.biz, go to the bottom of the website, to our contact tab, and give us your answer in an email, the first one to give the correct answer will win and be sure to follow me on reddit at gnome grown mushrooms as well as on instagram it's gnome grown mushroom gnome grown dot mushrooms and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get notifications about new episodes among us is where i reside the world would not turn if not for me by its side a thing to be worshipped and held above all others. Praise be to me, my sisters and my brothers. What am I? Thank you so much. You guys have a good one. Bye.